Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roxanne. If it's your first time here, then welcome. Today I want to talk to you guys about Cozy Murder Mysteries. So Cozy Murder Mysteries is something that I have, I have been super in the mood for lately, so I've been reading a lot of them, and I thought I would do a video about which ones I've been reading, what I think about them, um, ones I've read in the past, etc. So, um... Murder mis Cozy Murder Mysteries really got me into reading a long, long time ago. Um, they got me into reading series, they got me into reading lots of books um, throughout the year as opposed to just one or two. Um, and and so they they have a very special place in my heart. I, they are sort of the reason that I got into true crime, and that I love mystery in general. And and I love them. And sometimes they're sort of overlooked as fluff, and they can be. They definitely are meant to to be quick reads, comforting reads, um, not really scary or thriller y in any in any sense. At least I don't think. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're any less enjoyable or worth talking about. So. Uh, I thought, like I said, I would do a video about them. Cozy Murder Mysteries have a very sort of set standard way of being written. There's lots of tropes that are present in, in every single one. Um, there's kind of, there's there's a formula to them and every single one sort of follows that formula. And essentially you have this sort of um, either uh, sometimes a, a young, like late 20s to 40s and sometimes beyond. Um, woman she's usually single um and she she usually lives in a in a small town or or a if, if she lives in a big city then it's it's an area of that city that's sort of not as packed as something as the rest of the city um and some she she may have recently had a sort of big life change she either just got a divorce or she just opened a, a, her own business or she just moved um a lot of them have that sort of of beginning to them um they usually tend to be white women protagonist um and white women sometimes older white women authors are the majority um so they are, in my opinion, definitely lacking in diversity for sure. Um, and they are usually themed. So they either take place in a coffee shop or a bookstore or a library or uh, a bake a bakery or um, a dog a, a like a pet shop or um, you know something along those lines. Something small town cutesy. That's, that's where they take place. And then um, something happens, they encounter a murder, and they're either the... Uh, at some point in the series, they will be the main suspect. A lot, of, a lot of series start out with the first book, they are the main suspect, and they sort of have to become obsessed with the murder and then feel the desire to solve it themselves, and a lot of times they will do so before the police does. Um, and they all kind of follow the same exact formula and it's very tropey but they they lend themselves to being very quick reads very fun fluffy reads um they usually all have a romantic component to them and i really like them they have a not a short list of faults but i i am very cognizant of that and i enjoy them Regardless, but I'm very aware of the fact that um, you know they lack diversity. A lot of the times, they they say things that are <laughs> it is very in your face that they're written by like older white women. Um, but I go into that knowing this, and and I sort of there is a I get in the mood for them, and that's why I I, I go to them. So the very first. Um, Cozy Murder Mystery Series that I read was the Blackbird Sisters Mystery Series um, and that is by Nancy Martin and it has something like 10 books in the series or something like that and it's about um, three sisters. They, the books focus on Nora, Nora Blackbird, but uh, it's three sisters and they are all sort of cursed in that the men that they fall in love with die of tragic accidents um and uh they were their old mo their old philadelphia money uh, but have sort of f no longer have that money their parents kind of went to m they're like just completely threw away all their money so they still have their name and their reputation but they're they're broke as heck um and she is writing in the so social society 
column of their local newspaper and that's what she does and through that she has a lot of connections and she um just solves murder after murder after murder and uh, they're very fun i love nora as a character and i i read the entire series it it sort of died out uh after 10 books but um it's still very beloved for me and i and i love it very much and it's very fun and this book is very very beat up i've read it many many times um and yeah so this was my first murder mystery series i actually i went through a point in which i was like i don't really want to have all of these tiny series um i i i kind of fell into that trap of thinking they didn't really add value to my book collection which is sad that i thought that because now i'm back in the mood for them and sort of wish i had them still in my collection so i got rid of a lot of them that i had i i donated a lot of them but i liked a lot of them so i will go back through my goodreads and stuff and i will link down below all the ones that i loved there's one in particular that i really really liked um about an event planner for obvious purposes i studied event management and i've done events professionally for for my entire professional career so um i i connected a lot with that one but um yeah, I don't have any more, which sucks. I'm, I'm, I might buy them again at some point, but yes. Didn't I warn you? Didn't you warn me what? About donating them and you being like, ah, uh, I'm not gonna read them anymore. I'm not interested. And I was like, what if you get interested later? Like, yes, uh, I know. Yes, you might have, but we were also moving. We were also moving, and you were also complaining about the amount of books that I had. You would have to have read that, gotten rid of like seventy five percent of your books for me to not complain. It was that heavy. You read eight boxes of books. There were many more than eight boxes, and there were boxes. There were we had bags. Oh, books. okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's so much better. <laughs> well, yes, you might have, but regardless, it is what it is. I'm sure someone has enjoyed them after me, which is fine. I don't. I don't really regret donating them because someone has enjoyed them by this point, I'm sure, but um, I might buy them at, again at some point. But So again, like I, like I said, lately I have been reading a lot of them and so I want to, I've already, I've talked to you guys about a few of them in some recent wrap ups, but I stopped doing that because I, I knew that I was going to do this video and so I just thought I would hold off on that. So let me talk to you about some of the so um my my sort of desire to get back into cozy murder mysteries has uh coincided with my desire to read books about books books that feel very cozy and so what i what that has led to um oh also it coincided with me um applying for and getting accepted into a master's program to become a librarian so all of that has sort of um come together and has reflected itself in the types of uh cozy murder mysteries that I've been picking so they've all they're all bookish books they're all they're all about either librarians or uh, book restoration experts or um, booksellers etc except one um, so the the first sort of series that got me back into cozy murder mysteries after taking a long break from them is a bibliophile mystery series and so i have read homicide and hardcover which is the book first book and then i read if books could kill which is the second book um i read both of these two and this is about a um book restoration expert the the romance in this is not my favorite but I don't that's not why I'm reading these whereas I love the romance in this one um this is that's not so much why I'm reading this I'm reading this because I really like Brooklyn as a main character uh Brooklyn Rain Wainwright and I love the sort of tidbits about book restoration and that's more why I'm reading that one and so I have the next two books in the series which are I don't remember in which order, but they are The Lies That Bind and Murder Under Covers. And that is these two. Then um, I read Double Booked for Death by Allie Brandon. Oh, these are by Kate Carlisle. Kate Carlisle has written a few. I think she also has like a Fixer Upper series, which I might look into. Um, and it's about a woman that I'm assuming does Fixer Uppers, kind of like Joanna Gaines, probably on, uh, on DIY, is it DIY Network? 
Is it DIY Network? HGTV. Huh? HGTV. HGTV. Okay. Um, so the next one that I read was Double Booked for Death, a black cat bookshop mystery. And I got that one because it is a black cat bookshop mystery. <laughs> it has a black cat in the title. There's a black cat named Hamlet. Uh, who is a, a sort of character um, and it is set in New York City so that, that that all sort of called out to me and that's why I got it and this one is good this one starts out pretty slow romance wise which is really cool um, you kind of know or suspect who's going to become the the love interest but it's not really in your face in this first one which is which is cool because it seems to be taking its time. I love Hamlet the cat character um, he doesn't talk or anything he's just like a, a, a a presence in the book which is great and um, so this is about Darla who inherits a bookstore in Brooklyn from her aunt she comes she so she moves from she just recently divorced so she moves from Texas to Brooklyn to run the shop and um, in the first book they have an author event and the author dies and so she solves the mystery um, one that I read very recently and really, really enjoyed was By Book or By Crook by Ava Gates. And this takes place in North Carolina, I believe. Uh, somewhere in the Carolinas. Um, so, oh, and super floppy too, which is great. So I read this one on audiobook, really enjoyed it. So I decided to buy the physical copy and then buy the, the next books. This is a lighthouse library mystery. Um, and it also has a cat character. This, uh, is about a librarian. So she decides to leave Harvard library and move to a small town to become a librarian there. Uh, after she says no to to a proposal of the guy that she had been dating for for a long time and um the thing about this one that i don't really like is that it does have a, a sort of love triangle but it's not um like it's a courteous love triangle <laughs> um the the two guys are nice to each other and it's sort of like you just know they're both interested in her but it doesn't feel like a competition um she might go on a date with one and then she might go on a date with the other and there isn't this sort of like who am I going to choose thing going on yet um so the focus was more on the murders and so what happens with this one is that the library is able to obtain first edition a first edition collection of all of Jane Austen's main works and a note a journal of hers and um during the collection one of the benefactors of the library dies and um our main character Lucy has to wait um, yes Lucy has to solve the murder because her boss is the main suspect and so she's afraid that she's gonna lose her job as a librarian there that she just got and she really loves so uh, it's really good it's it's like I, it's really, really fun and I think I mean it might have to do that a subplot of it is all of the Jane Austens that might have to do with it as well as uh, uh, with regards to like how much I enjoyed it but whatever I really did enjoy it it was really great it was really fun and so I got the next books in the series which are Booked for Trouble and Reading Up a Storm by Ava Gates and like I said they also have a main character yes so the main character's name is Lucy yes is her last name Lucy Lucy Goosey? Yes. No. No. You heard of before, Lucy Goosey? Yes, I've heard of Lucy Goosey, but no, that's not her last name. Um, so one that I read a long time ago and got rid of a long time ago as well, I think even before I moved. Um, and I don't know why I never continued it, but now I want to start it up again and continue it is Mum's the Word, uh, or this is a flower shop mystery series, and the first one is Mum's the Word by Kate Collins, uh, and this is about a flower shop owner. Um, and I don't remember even what this is about because it was such a long time ago that I that I read this, but I think she, she's like a law school dropout, and then she decides to start up her own flower shop. And then one that I saw at the bookstore a few days ago and decided to pick up is Death by Coffee, a bookstore cafe mystery by Alex Erickson, and this is um there are two friends who start a book coffee shop and one of their 
the one of their uh, customers dies. And I, there's a cat in the cover, so there might be a cat as well. <laughs> you guys sense a pattern with these? Um, so yeah, this is what that one looks like. And yeah, so those are some of the ones that I have been reading and some of the ones that I will be reading. Um, I will link any other ones that I've read in the past and really enjoyed down below. Um... And yeah, like I said, they are definitely not without their faults, but if you're looking for something fun, fluffy, cozy, then I, I recommend them. I really enjoy them. I really love them. So yeah, as always, thank you for watching and for listening. I love you guys very, very much. Let me know which cozy murder mysteries you guys like.